Excel files are a staple of any business. So today, let's talk about how you can edit them on OutSystems. We're going to use OutSystems today to make edits to an already existing Excel file. And to do that, we're going to use a web application built on OutSystems and this advanced Excel Forge component. You can search this on the Forge tab. Just look for Excel. That should be the keyword. And you should find Advanced Excel as one of the options that show up. Now, if we go back to the project, let's import that as a dependency. When you open and search for the Excel plugin, you're going to see quite a lot of actions. We won't go through all of them today, but know that you can do a lot of different things with this component. For now, we'll just check everything and click Apply. As far as our sample Excel file goes, I'll be using this one I created from scratch. So this just lists a couple of uh, few records, a few records here for transactions with an amount, you know, just details we want to keep track of. What I want to do is add values to the next column, the column G here. And I'm going to sort of pull up an account manager for each of these transactions. Your use case might be a little more complicated, but the fundamentals are going to be here. I'll start off by creating that reference for my application. Here, we're going to create an account manager table. And in case you're not familiar how to do this, there's a link below for creating web applications and creating the database tables. So I'm just going to add the name, the contact number. I'll change that to phone number. And then we're also going to add the region. And this is going to be what we'll use to map the Excel file data with our database table. Now, as fans of OutSystems, I'm pretty sure you know this next step where we just drag and drop the table to create the screen. But if you're new, again, there are a couple of uh, helpful videos that can help you get started on the platform You can look over on our channel. So once I have the screens, uh, I'll just change these to be accessible without a login, just so I don't have any problems later on. And we'll also create a new screen just for the dedicated upload functionality. So here we'll ask our user uh, the Excel file that they want us to edit and my button to trigger that process. So we'll create update Excel. We'll also include that in the menu so it's easy to navigate to. And there we go. We're going to use the default upload component on Out Systems, just drag and drop to get that in there. And then let's use a button also for triggering the action. Or hmm, maybe let's do the loading button instead. So you can show them visually that we're doing the processing just so they don't think uh, there's nothing happening in the background. We're going to add a few variables here, one for the uploaded file. So we're just going to call that uploaded file. And then we're going to add another one for the file name. So these two are what our upload component needs in order to uh, set those values there. And then we'll also have another variable for a uh, flag to check if we're doing any processing. So that will be what the, our loading button will need. Oh, I guess that doesn't drag. Anyway, so we'll call this uh, updated or update Excel file. And then let's set the margin there just so it looks a little nicer. There we go. And then let's select the upload file com control. So we have the values or the variables specified. So we need the uploaded file and the file name. Then of course, we want to set an action. Let's double click that. So here we're going to call a server action. Just because if you check the server actions, you'll see the advanced Excel plugin is all server side. So we'll need some way to interact and that's going to be our server action. So we'll create one and maybe we'll just call it the map to account manager. I think that makes sense. And then this is what our button will be calling. We'll need the uploaded file, so that's going to be an input parameter. And then we're also going to return the revised file. So this is what we'll set up for downloading later on. Okay, let's just set a null binary for now. This is going to be just so we can test it out if everything is working as expected, or at least loading, so we can publish. And then we'll need to set the is loading property so that at the start of the action, it tells the button to show the loader or the spinner. So we're just going to set that to true. And then we're going to add another one at the, well, close to the end for setting that to false. So it uh, hides that loading or spinning indicator. 
In the middle, we're going to use our server side action, the map to account manager action, and drop that in there. We're going to use the local variable, the uploaded file, as the file will edit. And then let's see. Ah, so I forgot to set the is loading property. Let's change that. So we select the button. There we go. And then use the local variable is loading. And then there's also another action here, show loading and label. I think I want to set that to true. So it doesn't hide the text when it triggers the loading animation. And again, I think that should be good. Let's publish. Let's see how the output looks like so far. So what we'll have here are three screens, the account manager list page, the detail page, and the dedicated screen for updating the Excel file. Oh, hmm. Let's also add the records already. So when we do the mapping, uh, it already has a reference point or reference records that it will use to uh, update the Excel file. And there we go. So we have the two screens there. Let's add the uh, account managers. Uh, Jeremy Baramia. Hmm, I've used this before. Let's use that again. And then we'll just provide some random contact number. Here, since the region has to match what we have in the Excel file, I'm going to use AMER for America and APAC for Asia Pacific. So let's create a new account here. Account manager here. So Juan Santos, add a number, and the region for APAC. So these are the two values we'll be using. It has to match the one in the Excel file, otherwise we won't get results. So we're going to match based on the region. So now we have our two account managers. Let's check our update Excel page. It shouldn't do anything, really. So we're going to change that. Going back to Service Studio, now we can focus on building the logic for this one. We're going to flesh out the map to account manager action. But before that, we're going to add the download component to the client action just so we don't forget this one later on. Since the map to account manager is going to return the revised file, we're going to just return that so we can have that be downloaded. Maybe I'll change the file name to add underscore reverse or revised rather. Okay. So now let's go to the map to account manager and we're going to add a few actions here. What's critical to this is understanding a specific or rather the specific flow for using the Excel component. The very first action we need is to open the file. And to do that, we're going to use the workbook underscore open action. This is going to open the Excel file for us. There are two parameters here, the file name and the binary data. If you're using a non-premise system where you can have access to the file system, you can provide the file name. But for most of us, it's going to be an empty string because we want to pass the uploaded binary content or the binary file uploaded through the UI. The next part is we're going to specify which uh, worksheet we're going to work on. We could have an Excel file with multiple worksheets. That's definitely possible here. But since we have to select which one, we're going to use a worksheet underscore select action and specify the specific worksheet. So there is an index and name that you can choose from. Index just starts from one. Personally, I prefer the name. We can use the name just so it's easier to understand. Also, the very first parameter, the workbook, that's just the output for the workbook underscore open action. Once we have the selected worksheet, uh, the next step is to read the content of our Excel file. So we have here a cell underscore read action that we'll be using. So we drag and drop that there. And the cell read works by identifying which part of the Excel file we need. So in this case, we first set up or at least use the worksheet we need. And then there are three parameters you could set. You could either choose cell name or the cell row and number. For cell name, it's just a combination of the letter and the row. So in this case, F2 is what we want to read because we want to get the region for that record. We can optionally set row and column if we wanted to count instead of uh, specifying the actual column and row. So here, we could count six for the columns. So it's the sixth column. And then the cell row is going to be two because it's the second row on our Excel file. Okay, And that should also give us the region or the cell that we want to update or read. But we don't, well, personally, I don't want to use the columns because that involves a lot of counting. Instead, I'm just going to be straightforward and type F2. That's going to be the column and row we're going to access. 
And then there's this other parameter, read text. It will force it to be a string or a text. But if you're dealing with other data types, you can change that to false so you can map it out. So now we're going to query the account manager based on the region from that record or that cell we, we read. We're going to use region parameter uh, from the cell underscore read. So we're just going to select that there. And from our database table, we just check if it matches any of the regions we have. So we'll have the full record. Now we can write that to our Excel file. So we look for the cell underscore write. That's going to be the next action we take. And here we're going to specify the worksheet again. So just take the one from the worksheet underscore select. And then you can also set whether it's the cell name or the row and column. Personally, I still prefer using the cell name because we can uh, specify exactly what column and row we're going to be targeting. So in this case, it's going to be G2, just the one beside it. But of course, depending on your use case, cell row and column might be better. For the value, we're going to use the data we have from the database. So here, we'll select the name of the account manager so that it shows up beside our Excel file. The cell type, you actually have options here. If you're putting in a different type of value that isn't text, you can specify it here. If it's date time, integer, decimal, boolean, or a formula. But for us, it's going to be text, so I could leave this blank since it's the default. I'm going to write it in so it's easier to remember. Now we're going to create a local variable to store the changes we've made. What's happening behind the scenes is OutSystems is actually loading the Excel file in memory. And if we want to return that to the UI for the customer user to download, we'll have to use one of the actions here to get binary data to do that. We just have to provide the workbook that we want to use. And don't be confused. Workbook underscore open is when the parameter is workbook. And worksheet underscore select is for when it's worksheet. Just so you don't get any errors while you're building, while you're building the app. And then we set up file with updates with our get binary data function. And then last, but also a very important step, is the workbook underscore close function. This is important because we don't want any hanging resources. So we need to close those. Uh, we we'll just set that up and specify the workbook that we opened earlier. Okay. And then we just have to update the revised file output parameter. Remember to use the variable file with updates because otherwise it will cause an error. So change that null binary to file with updates. Anything after workbook close, since the resources are going to be closed, will not allow you to access the Excel file or do any of the operations. That should be it. So this is the full process for reading uh, an Excel file, looking up a value from the database, and then using that to update the workbook, specifically which cell value we want to update. So let's just go over to our user interface just to double check, did we miss anything? So let's go to update Excel. So we have the controls here, everything looks good. The button looks all good. Let's see the action. Okay, we have all the values there and our is loading functions or variables are already available. Okay, I think we should be good here. Let's publish. Let's see how this works out. There we go. Let's go back to our web application, refresh, and then go to update Excel. Let's upload our sample Excel file. Mm -hmm. And then let's see how this works. Okay, so the processing is very quick actually. So we have, huh, I thought I renamed this to underscore revised. Let's add that then. Let's see what, what what's wrong. Ah, huh. hmm. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let me try that again. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I, I think I see where I went wrong here. So I use the full file name, including the extension. So underscore revised shows up after the extension. Okay, that, that, that was wrong. <laughs> uh, let's, let's not, uh, we'll use xlsx. We'll just use a, a, you know, a different file name for me to not overwrite my original file, uh, but we'll change that. But let's see how the output looks like first. Okay, let's see. Okay, there we go. This is our updated Excel file. We have Juan Santos appearing as the account manager for this record, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. And that's not bad for a few minutes worth of work. 
but I'm pretty sure you're also interested in getting all those additional fields updated. So let's also add that in. So let's go back to Service Studio. Uh, uh, but I want to change that uh, issue I had uh, with the file name first. So let's change what the update Excel, uh, the download file does. We'll just give it a different uh, file name. I think that should be the most straightforward thing to do. I'm going to call it the Excel file. Uh, don't forget to tag in the extension there. And then, so we're going to update the map to account manager function to allow us to iterate over our uh, records in Excel. We're going to have to add a few more things here where we read the cell values and that will help us with all the other rows on our Excel file. Okay. So first we're going to need to keep track of the rows we're currently reading. So I'm just going to move this down because we're going to add a few more things here. But we need to have a variable to keep track. So we're going to add the local variable current, current row. And this will tell us what is the current row that we're reading. And then we'll set that to integer. We'll have to edit all the references to the cells using this current row variable. So we'll just select the cell read and just change the cell name to use that value. Uh, we can do a very, very quick string concatenation here. Just add, just use the plus operator and add current row. We're going to use an if condition here or an if block here to check whether the values we've read from the cell are an empty string if they are we stop the logic but if they aren't we are going to keep reading until we get to the uh, cell that uh, doesn't have any values this isn't we're not going to use the for each loop here because we don't have a specific record set we're iterating over instead our loop is condition based we're just going to rearrange a few things a lot of this is still the same we query from the database we write to the cell at this time, when the cell value is empty, an empty string, we point it back to get binary data because that's uh, essentially we're done updating the values. So here, we let's just adjust this to look nice. After cell read, after clearing from the database, after writing it to the cell, oh, uh, we, got, we have to update this. Change the number to current row as well. Since we're just moving to the, cur the next column, that should be easy enough. But after we've written to the cell, we need to update the current row to move forward. So there's going to be your increment operator. And just specify current row and then set the value there. We'll add one more plus one. So that goes to the next row. And then after this, it has to point back to cell read. So that's how we do our loop here. That's condition based. So let's move just move a few of these to make room for that. So it's nice and pretty. So cell read. Once we're done incrementing current row, we point it back to cell read. So it can check again the next, this time the next row because it's already been incremented. Then we can see if we should continue or stop. Okay. So again, to recap, we read the cell, check if we have content, query it from the database if we do, write it to the next cell based on the current row. We're just moving the next column, so it's going to be G. And then once we're done, increment the current row and then read again until we find an empty value. One of the things I want to add here, and I'm adding it as a comment, this is not ideal for large data sets. We're querying every single time we read a row cell, and there are better ways to do this. But for this very quick demo, uh, this should be fine. We have a small data set, small database table. But this is, again, not good for large data sets. You will want to maybe store it in a local variable first before you check if what, what the corresponding uh, record should be. That way, it's a memory operation rather than a database operation or, or do some, something else to optimize, okay? But just as long as we're clear, this isn't going to be for large data sets, uh, we should be good, okay? And anyway, the topic of our video is Excel file editing, not the database best practices. So, you know, you can give me a little bit of slack here. <laughs> okay, let's order, order these around. There you go. And then... And maybe here, and then we should be good. That should be it. So let's publish. I, I think we have everything we need. Hmm, yeah. It should be good. Oh, wait. Hmm. Uh, maybe one thing I forgot. Uh, we don't have a header. We, I forgot to write in that header. Let's let's add that in. Uh, let me do that now. So we'll use the same cell write action to add the 
header and we're just going to hard code this in same worksheet we're just going to call this right header same worksheet and then uh the cell name we're going to use what g1 we should be able to access that there and we'll call this the account manager well what happened there we have account manager field we're going to just hard code text there so it's clear. Okay. Then let's try publishing this again. Okay, nice. Let's open that in the browser. See how that goes. Okay, we have the records there. Uh, set up the Excel file again. We're going to use the base Excel file, not the revised one. And then let's see it okay we have the correct uh file name now you can save let's open that up huh. okay so the account manager was there but i think i missed something uh, let me see hmm let me ah okay maybe it was the current row yeah, there we go. So it has to be a default value there. Otherwise, it's going to be reading from zero. That's not what we want. So two, because we're skipping the first row, that should be fine. Well, let me double check everything. Okay, update Excel. Let's make that anonymous as well. Just so we'll, you know, we don't have to log in to access that. So always note that if you don't have the anonymous role, you'll need to log in. In this example, we don't want to. Then let's try publishing it again. So we have the web page. Let's refresh. Try that again. We're still using the base file. So note this doesn't edit the existing reference file, so don't worry. And update the file and then let's see if uh, the download works. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now you have all the values, the ones queried from the database, edited into our existing excel not bad not bad for a few minutes worth of work so i think uh, we've covered pretty much the basics of this component it's a very useful component for excel manipulation i'm pretty sure we have a lot of uh, needs for this type of uh, manipulation so hopefully this uh, helps you with your projects let us know if you have any other suggestions for videos we could do this is out systems how to thank you so much for watching see you in the next video bye